feel like I'm driving through Jurassic Park here. At it night. does kind of feel like that, yeah. doesn't it? Vacationers by the millions for nearly a century have come to the highest point in the peninsula of Florida to take in the breathtaking views near Iron Mountain. You know, a lot of people don't know that right where we're standing 100,000 years ago, we'd be looking out at Atlantic Ocean surrounding us. That's because this was an island at one point. This is an island, or was an island. At 298 feet above sea level, this bluff area remains much like it was hundreds of years ago. A lot of wildlife out here? Yeah, we have gopher tortoise and turkey, and a few weeks ago we saw, saw a fox or two out here. Well, there's a turkey right there, isn't it? Yep. A man named Edward Bach immigrated here from the Netherlands when he was only six years of age. Bach later became a highly successful publisher. At age 26, he was the uh, editor-in-chief of a ladies' home journal, Pulitzer Prize winning author. But one thing that was important to him, his grandmother told him at a very young age to make you the world a bit better or more beautiful because you've lived in it. And that's exactly what he did and that's why he built these, uh, built these gardens. Bach purchased many acres of land and transformed that property into beautiful, lush gardens of flowers and trees. He was inspired to build um, a contemplative garden, a place for the American public to come and enjoy beauty in a naturalistic setting. And uh, it was also meant to be a bird sanctuary. I think it's pretty nice that uh, you have an endangered species list here of all the different plants and the flowers, that type of thing, and you're trying to save all this stuff? We are. We have an entire staff who's dedicated to rare plants, uh -huh. and uh, we work with the Center for Plant Conservation. Uh, you can find plants here that you won't find anywhere else on the planet, most of them, of course, endangered. The sprawling Pinewood Estates is another venue to visit at Bach. So this is the Pinewood Estate with so much history, huh? I'm so excited for you to have the chance to see this. This is a 1932 Mediterranean-style estate. It's just under 13,000 square feet, and it was built by Charles Austin Buck. So even in 1932, they had doors that go into the wall, slide out, get the breeze coming through. Huh? In Florida, you know, you want to bring the outdoors in, and uh, Mr. Buck knew that back in 1932. So Mr. Buck was just here a few weeks of the year. Did, uh, did a lot of this change over the years? There are uh, some, of the, some of the other owners of the house through the years made some, some slight changes to it. Um, but pretty much you, when you're here, you get the sense of how the Bucks lived their lavish lifestyles back in the early 1930s. And he knew when he built this property what he was doing because this was built in 1932 and the tower was completed in 1929. So this house was was specifically built here three years later uh, to take advantage of the gardens and tower. Oh, it's just spectacular. To show his appreciation for the opportunities he received in the United States, Bach presented the gardens and the singing tower with a carol on to the people of the country as an enduring token of his love for this land. They realized they were going to need uh, a way to irrigate those gardens, and when the idea was brought up about a water tower being built, he remembered from his boyhood home in the Netherlands, you know, all the beautiful Carillon Towers, and thought, you know, we're going to build something better than a water tower. We're going to build the world's most beautiful tower. So he hired architect Milton Maderi to do just that, build me the world's most beautiful tower. And he did. At the time, it was used to irrigate the gardens, but it primarily was to hold our 60 bell carillon. It's a 60 bell Taylor carillon from England. Uh, combined weight of the bells are 60 tons. The smallest bell, 16 pounds, all the way up to the largest bell, which weighs 12 tons. The statistics on the tower built in 1929 are staggering. 205 feet tall. There's four million pounds of Georgia marble from a quarry in Tate, Georgia. There's also coquina stone from St. Augustine. It's built around a steel and brick structure. You ready to go up? I'm ready to go. All right. I've got the tripod here. Brian makes me carry the heavy stuff. Excellent. A trip up the inside of the tower is done by the nation's oldest continually operated elevator. Okay, this is as high as we can ride. Oh, that was a good trip. I imagine everybody wants to do this, right? Yeah, they, they do. Unfortunately, the tower is not open to the public. Once we arrive on top at the Carillon, we're amazed at the high-tech equipment they use. This space acts as an office for the caroloneur, where he or she can write and instruct music. 
Mediterranean. By the way, the view ain't too bad either. Do you see the very large country club looking estate there? I do. The home with the two chimneys popping through the trees diagonally behind it was Edward Box House. Oh, that's his place. Yeah, and he would walk and take evening strolls from his house to this point and was inspired by the sunsets and things that he saw here that he decided to, be, uh, to build the beautiful gardens. The spiral staircase to the top. Here we go. Well, there aren't many Caroliners in the entire world, are there? No, I think um, maybe 250, mm -hmm. 600 and instruments. It, 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 the reason being there are few of these or a few of the, uh, you know, it's just so difficult to play. No, there's about 600 instruments. 600 yeah. instruments some, total. Some people um, have a couple of instruments, combine them, um, yeah, so 250, maybe 300 carolinas. Really a workout playing this thing, isn't it? Uh, if it's a heavy carolin, yeah, and this one, believe me, is a heavy one. Can you give us a little sample of what you do and how you do it, and that type yeah. of thing? Yeah, so basically this is like a big piano, white keys, black keys, Okay. and it is touch sensitive, so I can play really soft, I can make a crescendo, make a bigger sound, um, and, and that's about it. It's very simple. So every key is connected to a wire. The wire goes through my roof, is connected to a clapper inside mm -hmm. the bell. So the bell, bells are stationary. They don't move. There's 60 ton. 60 ton. How do they put these up here? How do you, you know, once you're up here and you see, how do you construct something like this? Well, that's what you know, you think about these were, were raised in 1928. They actually were brought through the center of the tower. And then the rest of the tower was completed around the bells. Is there more well, work to the heavier bells? The heavy bells? bells are connected to the pedals. Very on your feet. Yeah, huh? so the highest bells here are so light you can play them with your finger. Mm. Um, the more I go to my left, the bigger the bells get. And these guys are so heavy that you can't even play them with your fist. Oh, and wow. that's why they're connected and then you can... Oh, that's the big... That's, that's the, the big guy. How much does that one weigh? 12 tons. 12 tons yeah. for that belly you just yeah. rang. Yeah. And the entire grounds are open if you wanted to bring a, a blanket and a picnic basket and uh, even a bottle of wine and sit down on the grounds, enjoy the carillon music, stroll the gardens and uh, just let time slip away. That's, that's what we're here for. For breathtaking beauty and awe-inspiring architecture, the Bach Tower Gardens in Lake Wales, Florida is a must-see. R.J. Fritz, out and about for Life to the Max. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.